Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vows and More, a vintage online tube store. And today, in tube lab number 59, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite 6SN7s. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Today we're going to look at one of my favorite manufacturers of 6SN7s. Yep, you guessed it, Sylvania. Let's have a good look at a cross-section of the various versions Sylvania made over the years. This may be one of the earliest, and it's the most unusual Sylvania. It's got a flat offset black plate. Now normally when you see a flat offset plate, you would think RCA, because they made that version for the entire run of the tube era. But there's a difference uh, that makes it easy to identify the rebrands. Take a look at the rivets. There's five rivets on one side and two, only two, on the other side. And of course, these are twin triodes, right? Two tubes in one envelope. So the other side's identical. Now, one of the reasons why I think this is a very early version is it's got the waste chrome and a foil getter way down there. You can't see it but there's a rectangular piece of metal, a solid piece of metal, that carried the gettering, and that's why we call it a foil getter. These are great sounding tubes. In fact, um, and they're fairly rare. Um, in fact, Sylvania has a house sound. In fact, most manufacturers like Tungsol and Sylvania will have a house sound. And the house sound for Sylvania is a warm, rich sound. Not only the 6SN7s, the 6SL7s, um, which are a very similar looking tube, um, have that warm, rich sound with just enough detail to satisfy an audiophile. Okay, let's keep going. Next up is probably the most famous of the 6SN7s, the GT, otherwise known as the Bad Boy. And it's got a large amount of waste chrome. It's got back-to-back T-plates, -back black T-plates. You see them there? There's a two rivet version and a three rivet. We're looking at the two, of course, right now. And one of the problems with the GTs, all the GTs ever made, not just Sylvania's, is that they're lower spec. So they have lower plate voltage and they have uh, lower plate dissipation. And plate dissipation is measured in watts. And that's just how much power the tube can handle. Now, what's going on is I think even though they specs for modern amps and preamps allow these technically to be played that they're just too close to the the maximum ratings of the tube and they get noisy and they never get unnoisy so you've if you do if you use them you take a risk of destroying a, a valuable tube and um, as a result I don't recommend using the GT in any modern gear period in fact, this is the reason why uh, I redesigned the prototype 6 or 12 SN7 preamp. And I, I made it into what's now the universal 6 or 12 SN7 kit preamp. And it can play any 6 SN7 ever made, including the GT, without any problems. Now, the trade off was I had to bias the tubes a little bit cooler. They still sound fantastic, but the, the drive of the preamp, or the voltage gain, is a little lower than would be normal. It's still plenty to drive most power amps, and certainly it's more than enough to drive the URI, which is a very efficient power amp. Okay, let's keep moving. So, here we're looking at the first version from the 1940s. By the 1950s, we had a new version, the GTA. And this is the first one. Large... Uh, large silver dome or cap, that's your gettering. Same back-to-back -back straight T-plates. In fact, I call this the GTA straight plate version. Great sounding tube. And best of all, the GTA and GTB, they're the modern version of the tube, and they're higher, much higher spec than the GTs. And you can play these pretty much in any app or preamp. Next after that, and these are quite rare, these straight plates. They were probably made 1950 to 52, something like that. And not that many of them survived. And the ones that survived, not that many of them test good. So um, 
I once in a while I'll put a couple of pairs into the store and they sell within 24 hours. Somebody online will wrap me out that they're in the store and they're gone. Much more attainable and less expensive is the GTA angled plate. See how the plates now are turned? And I think Sylvania did this for low noise. And um, the they kept this design right to the end of the tube era around the oldest Sylvanias I think I've ever seen with a, a good date code on the box was 1982. I think the plant closed a year or two after that. Sylvania had quite a few plants actually, but they had a, a really large one in, in um, Pennsylvania at Emporium, I believe. And they all, they all basically closed one after the other. This is a Tallboy GTB. That's the next tube after the GTA. And these were made in the 1960s, 70s, all the way up until the end of the second tube era when Sylvania closed down. They come in the Tallboy and they come in more of a standard short bottle version. Plates are the same. All that's different is that the, the glass is taller and the plates are, in this case, elevated a bit, in this case, sucked suck down a bit or lowered. Now you might wonder, why the heck would you have two versions? Well, TV came along in 19, early 1950s and TVs did not have a lot of real estate for mounting tubes. Not only that, but they needed a lot of tubes. So as a result, um, TV manufacturers asked the tube manufacturers to compact their tube designs. And that's when we start to see tubes getting shorter. Okay, now you might have noticed this is rebranded Westinghouse. That was very common back in the day. Westinghouse made equipment. They didn't make tubes. So all, all they did, Sylvania did for them was rebrand it so that Westinghouse could sell this as their own tube. Because, you know, parts, there was money sell, supplying parts um, in your stores. And Westinghouse, of course, they wanted a chunk of that money. So, anyways, let's look at a couple of very variants or variations. This looks very much like a GTB, and it is a GTB. Turn it around. There you go. But it's got a little shallower gettering or, or cap on the top. The plates look exactly like a Sylvania, and I believe they are, but it's branded Rogers. This is a Sylvania assembled at the Rogers plant in Toronto. Now, for a long time, I actually considered these to be an exact Sylvania. Now I consider them to be a Sylvania Rogers tube. And what I think happened, I've only been able to find one reference for what the heck was going on, and that was from a former worker. And he said that Sylvania was regularly shipping parts to the Toronto plant. Ah. So I think what happened is that the, the plates were assembled in one of the U.S. plants, shipped up as units, Maybe even the mica is assembled with them, but probably just the plates. The molds are identical um, for the bases and the pins. So I think, uh, and Rogers was a, you know, a tube manufacturer that went way back. They, they were there at the beginning of the tube era of the, <laughs> well, at the beginning of the tube era, the beginning of the early radio era. And they had their own designs, of course, and they would have had their own glass works and their own idea about gettering. So that explains why this looks almost exactly like a U.S. made Sylvania. And they sound very much like the U.S. Sylvanias. One more variation. This is a really interesting one. This is another GT. And have a look at that. That looks a lot like the Sylvania GTA, doesn't it? The difference is it's got the shorter uh, top cap. And it's got these spacers or whiskers. You see that there? The little metal rods coming off of the mica and when and I think this one oh yeah see this on the back see that rod supporting it when you see those things that's a sure indicator that this is either a mill spec tube or an industrial tube and the, these are the earliest Rogers tubes I've ever been able to find which makes sense because they would go back to um, you know they're, they're very similar to the 1950s Sylvanias these are great sounding tubes in fact, this is a tube my son Charles discovered. He's much more into poking his nose into, you know, weird and wonderful tubes than I am. I, I listen to so many tubes that uh, it's good to have, you know, fresh ears. Uh, let's get that on camera so you can see it a little bit better. There you go.
Anyways, he discovered them and he said, Dad, you know, I think these are going to be great sounding tubes. And he was right. The problem is, in thousands of tubes that I've gone through, I think we found 24 of them, a couple of dozen at the most. I think I have three matched pairs. But this is a daily listener. I keep this going in, um, in my Universal Kit app. And, um, we, and uh, eventually, maybe we'll find some more and I'll put them in the store. Um, but not for now. It's just not enough to, to be able to sell. Okay, well, hopefully that was fun. Remember, all of these Sylvanias have that house sound, that warm, rich sound. Some of them, like the um, bad boys, have that little special something going on in the bass. That really is what distinguishes the bad boy. It's maybe a touch bass forward. Maybe the bass is just a little bit, um, has a little bit better clarity than the rest. I just wish that, you know, we could play that in every amp out there, but be careful with that. But in general, these are all wonderful sounding tubes. They all share sort of that house sound. Okay, um, let's drop in and see what, what's going on with the kit amps. Well, lots. It occupies a big chunk of my work day, except Fridays in which, you know, I get to chat with you guys. But the kit amps are now available for purchase by the test builders. In fact, if you express interest before you've already got an email, and I've already sold three kits. But there's still some inventory in the store. It's limited though. The plan is to be shipping in the first week of December. And uh, the first round of kits go out to test builders. You need to already have some basic soldering skills and in general know how to own, how to use a volt ohm meter. You don't have to be a pro at any of this stuff. You just have to have some basic skills. Now, to thank you for being a test builder, you get a free quality set of tubes with your kit. Now, I'm going to set aside one kit amp in each type. There's three kits. There's two the two preamps and the URI monoblock. Um, but I'm going to set aside one kit for an inexperienced builder. Now the reason for that is it'll be good to see how somebody with less experience does up against the more experienced builders and they may actually find some problems that the more experienced builders won't see. Um, now there's not going to be a, a build manual. The build manual is going to be a whole series of videos just like this one. And the whole it should be fun. We're going to make it fun. It's going to be fun. We're going to have fun building these things. The whole point is to have fun. I mean, the whole point is to have great sound. They're great sounding kits, but the whole point is to have fun building them. I remember when I built my first kit when I was maybe 14 or 15, I had the most fun of my life and I've never forgotten that experience. So I'm going to try to recreate that for everyone who's interested. Now, if you want to buy an amp as an inexperienced builder, please contact me prior to purchasing. I want to make sure that it's a good fit for you. Now, let's take a look and see what I'm actually working on. Well, all that's really left to do is the top plates. And here's what they look like after they've been drilled and they're raw before they're finished. Have a look at how thick they are. They're 3 sixteenths. They actually have a gauge, but they're almost exactly 3 sixteenths. This is what they look like when they're drilled. Have a look at... Some of the bevels are done nicely by machine. The bigger holes, the bevels are... See that? Can you see that on camera? God, it's hard. There it is. Uh, but a lot of the work has to be hand-finished. This is the top. This is the back, which is even, even worse. It needs more work because the drills punch through and aluminum is very soft and even with backing plates it's tough to get the drill cleanly through. The holes are perfect but the, um, the, the drilling needs to be, the flashing needs to be cleaned up and I use a whole series of hand, machine and hand tools. Here's one of my favorite. This is made in Japan and this is a reamer. A reamer or a flasher, a deflasher I guess you call it. And it goes in to It'll go in these fairly small holes. This is the RCA jack hole. And um, this is actually the E80CC preamp top plate. These, these big holes, they're actually where the top mounted filter caps go. And down here, this is where the, um, 
the socket holders go. They're PCB mounted. These are beautiful socket holders here, ceramic. Let me see if I can get one in for you. There you go. See how nice that fits? Sorry about all the glare and the flash, but these things are reflective. It's just a little bit of a tiny amount of play to make sure you can get a good fit. Anyways, the neat thing about these plates is they can be hand finished. So they get a, they first they get a brushed, uh, a machine brush finish that goes in this after they're all cleaned up and there's no more knobby stuff and the, you know, the corners are all um, knocked down and recessed or rebated, I guess it's a good word for it. They get a machine finish from front to back like this. So actually my machine pulls this way. So I go this way. The idea is that the, each plate will reflect the light properly from the viewer's point of view, from the front. <laughs> if I'm boring you, skip ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, and then they get hand finished uh, with sanding blocks, sort of like a f the fine body on a, an old um, antique car. Anyways, uh, I actually use sanding blocks that uh, my grandfather made and owned. My, my English grandfather, Gordon, he was um, a master cabinet maker and he worked for the railways in Montreal. And my, uh, my Polish grandfather, my Jaja, he worked for a sugar mill um, in the harbor of Montreal. And both of them are very skilled workers. Um, and I'm sure I inherited some of those genes. Anyways, um, this is what we use for the hand uh, brushed finish, uh, the, hand, the hand brush finish, the last of the passes. This is an open coat paper. It's made by Norton, which makes uh, fabulous uh, commercial industrial grade papers. And the reason why I use open coat is because aluminum clogs up sandpaper really fast. And open coat just means that we have a certain percentage of abrasive and then open areas. And you can see all those white areas, that's just the paper backing. And this does a wonderful job of making a hand brush finish. Anyways, enough of that. You can tell I'm really, I'm really, um, I'm, re I'm really in love with the handwork that it takes to put out the kit amps. That, that part of it is a great joy for me. What, what, what came in this week? Well, a whole bunch of parts for the kit amps. A lot of, all of the chokes are, are coming in from Hammond. Hammond is a great uh, old timey um, uh, transformer manufacturer based in Canada. Some of the parts are made in um, in Canada still, and some of them are made in China. They're all great quality. Uh, they're not the cheapest you can buy. Here's a little choke. These are for the, um, the kit preamps. And the reason they can be so small, and actually there's two of these in each kit because they're dual model, right? So there's two power supplies. But the reason they can be so small is because there's not a lot of current in a preamp. Preamps are voltage amplifiers, right? Have a look at the uh, choke for the URI, the monoblock. It's another, it's another Hammond. Look at the size of this thing. This one's made in China, um, to the original design, of course. These are monsters. In fact, you might say, Jim, 10 Henrys, that's about right for, for a power amp. Sorry for the glare, but 100 milliamps, that's huge. You're only running about 30 milliamps, aren't you? And that's true. But for great sound, remember, we're not talking about crappy sounding um, tube gear here. We're, we're talking about building a great sounding uh, kit amp. You want oversized chokes and you want oversized power supplies. And that, that really helps a lot with dynamics and helps with that punch. You want your amp to respond instantly to music. So that's why we end up with a choke that's just huge. They're more expensive. They take up more real estate, but in my opinion, they're worth it. They build a much better sounding amplifier. And last but not least is this big monster. This is the universal power supply for the URI. And have a look at this. It's another Hammond. They're beautifully made. And look at all the wires. Now, the reason why there's so many wires is because there's a whole bunch of taps on the primary. And um, it can, you can, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can, this, this universal 
power supply can handle voltages anywhere from about 100 volts AC all the way up to maybe 250 volts AC. And all you need to do is to follow the drawing showing you which tap, which taps you connect up to get your voltage, your household voltage. So all of the um, kit amps actually have universal transformers of various types so that I can sell the kit amps anywhere in the world and not worry about the voltage. And it's going to be, this is actually going to be a very important segment of the build videos, is how to um, line up the correct tap. Because sometimes you're sort of in between two taps, and I have a secret to show you how to do that properly. Okay, well enough of that. It's a long episode. Sorry folks, sometimes there's just lots to talk about. And there's actually a little bit of housekeeping that we won't get till next week. We'll do the housekeeping next week. Um, this is the last week of the Black Friday sale. Your code's Black Friday 15. It ends a week Sunday. And it's the biggest sale of the year. So take advantage of it. Um, I've blocked it out, but I still have flat rate $20 shipping around the world. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's... Uh, on me folks and unfortunately um, the Black Friday discount does not apply to the kit apps there's just not enough margin on the kit apps to, to allow you to use a 15% discount but it works for everything else in the store okay stay safe everyone this is Jim from Valves and More signing off cheers everyone <laughs>